from the Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty is Associate Counsel Kara Tolliver. Good morning, Kara. How are you? Good morning. Thank you, Meg. Happy to be here. Well, I am really happy that, as I was telling you off air, I'm really happy that Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty is fighting for all of us. I appreciate it so very much. And every time I, I told you this already, but every time I look on your website, I, I see your growing staff and I think, good. <laughs> I'm so glad that there are so many of you on the good guys team because we need you to defend ourselves, to defend uh, our constitutional rights here in the United States. And I know there's some, uh, some good news out of Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty with regard to yet another uh, lawsuit against the Biden administration. Let's talk about it. Yeah, that's exactly right, Meg. Uh, so on Monday, uh, Will was able to secure a favorable ruling ordering President Biden and the Minority Business Development Agency to stop discriminating against our clients based on race. And uh, for those of your listeners who might be unfamiliar with this agency, the Minority Business Development Agency, or MBDA, is the newest federal agency officially uh, created in November of 2021, I believe it was, when President Biden signed the Infrastructure Act into law. So this agency is dedicated entirely to providing uh, business-related benefits and programming and resources only to certain businesses based on race or ethnicity. And uh, this is a cornerstone of the administration's so-called racial equity agenda. But uh, the court's ruling in our favor reaffirms the basic constitutional guarantee of equality, which, of course, prohibits the government from picking favorites based on race or ethnicity. Well, I'm... Again, relieved that you are representing these clients and really ultimately representing all of us. But it is equally frustrating that we have to go to these lengths in order to uh, defend our rights. And, and the fact, and I asked you this too, I know that you can very readily and easily give your legal opinion, but um, in your opinion, does the Biden administration, is, is this, uh, well, I mean, it's somewhat rhetorical question this is obviously a deliberate agenda but do they really are they really their motivation is that they're going to try to pull as 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 many shenanigans as possible in order to see how far they can take this how far they can get what what they can get away with well i i definitely think that in, in this current day and age um the biden administration uh is bound and determined to to prioritize racial politics over um and in violation of of basic constitutional principles and i this i, I think this ruling serves as an important alarm and reminder of what the law is and what it is not in defense and in furtherance of equality in this case. Um, this case was our eighth lawsuit uh, that our organization has filed against the Biden administration. I believe we're up to nine um, uh, currently uh, with with five wins in hand while some of our cases are still pending. So what do you ant- what do you anticipate is uh I mean, going to happen next now that you have had, I mean, do you believe that the Biden administration will appeal this decision? Can they appeal this decision? Uh, Yes, they certainly can. At at, at this stage, uh, the court has sided with us to award us the the preliminarily requested relief. Um, And now that ball is kind of in the government's court, uh, so to speak, to either seek an appeal um, on this ruling or consider other actions. Um, so we'll kind of just wait and see, and we will continue to, to, to bring the fight either way. Our goal is to ensure that MBDA is not allowed to continue in a mission purely devoted to race-based programming and services. Do you have any idea how many employees the, the taxpayers in the United States pay for this minor, minority business development agency? I guess because in my opinion, I think the entire agency should be dissolved because they've proven that they are racist inherently. Yeah, well, um, MBDA was given a, an appreciable uh, $550 million funding allocation to um, start, and it's otherwise unlimited. Uh, so that money, um, as you said, gives them an explicitly race-based charter um, and equips them to 
expand their reach through a fully integrated nationwide network of offices. Yeah, it's just, so. I, I mean, just, just think if, Kara, if the situation were reversed and there was some sort of agency that only, only uh, gave preferential treatment to white people. I mean, imagine the outcry. Right. Right. That's exactly right. And, you know, we've, we've been, we've been back there in our history, um, already. And, you know, now, now the roles are reversed. So, um, no matter what a person's race is, um, our clients and every American are constitutionally entitled to the right to be free from intentional race discrimination by the government. And that's what we're demanding in this case. So d- did you have any kind of interaction or did you um, observe any kind of interaction with the government's attorneys and how they can possibly defend some- this, well, this agency and the intentions of this agency? So that's a great question. Um, only under limited circumstances can the government impl- ever implement race conscious action uh, to do so, the government has to meet strict standards for justification. Absent that adequate justification for each racial preference and the benefit that is bestowed, the government's race discrimination is unlawful and constitutional and unconstitutional. So that's what happened in this case. The Biden administration cannot justify and largely fails to offer any evidence at all for its arbitrary inclusion of the dozen or so plus racial minorities for the broad ranging business programs and services that are unlimited to any particular industry. And so that is exactly why the court uh, ruled in our favor. Yeah, there mean, was just nothing to back it up. It seems like it was a slam dunk for you. I mean, I, you know, I don't want to say, hey, that they made your job easy, and we kind of, I don't know. In I, some ways, yes. I right. mean, this was this is uh, legally a, a pretty straightforward case. <laughs> well, and that's that's why I think it's. I mean, there's an element of audacity in the, the Biden administration even attempting to to do this in this agency <laughs> even. Um, existing in the first place and the fact that they that they thought that they could get away with it and that's why I have to I go back to the same question what are they thinking maybe they're not thinking and but then I have to ask myself there's obviously we're seeing across the country this diversity equity and inclusion and the mm-hmm. the mentality that uh, that white people are inherently racist and and I think that's the that's on the obstacle that we have to continue to push back on and overcome is that is that to be accused of something that we're not is is really often you know just the power of suggestion is often is often an obstacle that we have to overcome you're exactly right meg um on a basic level it's it's totally repugnant to human dignity to be presuming anything, an ability to succeed, an inability to succeed, or anything else on the basis of race. And, you know, without our, our basic principles of equality, all of our other rights are, are further and likewise diminished. So we'll, we'll continue to, to push back on, on this racial equity agenda and continue to vindicate the fundamental notions of human dignity that are embraced in um, our Constitution under the doctrine of equality. Well, Kara Tolliver, thank you so much for your efforts on behalf of the good guys. I always say that about Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty. So <laughs> grateful that you guys are out there working on our behalf. And keep up the excellent work. Stay in touch with regard to this issue. Or obviously, you've got job security as as long as the Biden administration is, is still in place. Ugh, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I do appreciate all your efforts, and uh, thanks for joining me on the show this morning. Thanks a lot, Meg. Have a great day. I'm going to go to a break. Uh, I also want to mention, if you want more information about Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty, you can always go out to will-law.org.